I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked really? like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plumber rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. What episode am I on? I think I'm on that. Human episode three then. Johnny Ringo. Oh. Yeah. Find the main entrance of the tunnel. Okay. okay.
see what I find. Maybe. There's. What's that? Anything about your vigilance committees? I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves and killers, robbing travelers, and hijacking gold shipments. Like those that ran with Plummer. Some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's sons. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving and murdering their neighbors. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Dangerous, desperate individuals. No, oh, come on. Bummer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter, which I had no idea how to break. I was outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was touched, or had some kind of death wish, seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. I thought I was some kind of hero. Finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. 
I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine, but once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. Shoot him! Uh. A single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Let's do this! reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. Daddy. With all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. I can't hear you. All it takes is one tiny spark. And boom. Oh, damn. There he is. God damn you. As a boy, I always loved the Fourth of July. Surprise! Oh, come on. What I was trying to do. Take First that thing, this thing. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted too. thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder, a way into the mine from the opposite side. It 
It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. Which ain't easy when you're suspended between heaven and hell. I was determined not to give up, however. <clears throat> As Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find a new Bob. And I had made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. Oh, come on. What the hell happened? Like this? First, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator or climb the ladder. I wanted to use the element of surprise. Plus, I figured I could use the exercise. I was warmed up already, so what the hell? Plummer was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserved better. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Who's shooting at me? Where's the... What the heck? both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own.
unhinged, and I could see right away that this was going to take some doing. That's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Harden as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Gotta catch him up. Episode 4. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody. Not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time, and that night in Abilene was no different. Oh, wow, looks like it's discarded, huh? I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wisdom. The Texas Rangers got heart. Yeah, that's what they want you to believe. It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres. very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me, and... Let it shoot out or what? Wait, I'm jumping a gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? 
John Wesley Harden was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men, fathers and husbands, brothers and sons, men with families who cared about them. He was a bona fide folk hero by then and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted things. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. God damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest <sighs> friends. Harden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their jefe of my unwelcomed presence. Bob was among them. And I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption. But John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration.
think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Before I could test my metal against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. Oh, come on. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Oh no! Hey, oh. guy, how am I falling off the thing here? Ugh. <sighs> 
No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I gotta like jump on it or something. It's, it's, it doesn't let me fall, fall off. No way. <clears throat> Before I could test my metal against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption. With John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Oh, come on. to say nobody there was happy to see me. felt a certain hostility.
was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. What? No, wait. He didn't hit me then. I'm sure of it. What? Oh, I gotta hold it. Okay. What? What? bolt of adrenaline or maybe that was fear he was well known for his tricks and i knew i'd need my own if i was ever to defeat him <laughs> no wait he didn't hit me then i'm sure of it come on Oh, come on. Dodging those bullets, but...
That man was faster than Grease Lightning. But being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? <laughs> Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, do you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high, they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony, and the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. Oh, come on. They saw me before I saw them. country, the winter home of the Cherokees, and that's why they had retreated them. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did, but then again, I got a lot of those.
Did you find Grey Wolf? Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. Oh, wow. that led to a deeper cave. in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure angry cussedness. See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit as they had torches on the walls. Oh, come on. Was his cave big as hell, Ben? Chiricahua had hit out there during the Indian War. Uh. I'm missing so much. They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? To be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones.
come you know so much about engines? A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. Haven't seen him since. I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows. And I sensed he meant me no... I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows. And I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. Thank you, darling. Yeah. A bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high, they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony. And the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea but now that the shot has started there was no backing down saw me before I saw them. rugged country, the winter home of the Cherokawas, and that's why they had retreated there. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did, but then again... Did you find Grey Wolf? Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. Yeah. 
Damn it. What the heck? What the world? crevice that led to a deeper cave. Don't tell me you went in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure angry cussedness. See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit. They had torches on the wall. his cave. Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hit out there during the Indian War. <laughs> They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? <laughs> to be honest, I was more concerned with the live horses than the dead. so much about engines a few years back I was married to two mescalero women at the same time yeah they were sisters polygyny is traditional among the mescalero so what happened well I had to get out of there those girls never shut up both of them nagging at me all the time drove me half crazy <sighs> I haven't seen them since no I mean what happened with gray wolf oh well I pursued him into the cave of death I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows, and I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. as his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men, and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul would have no rainbow if the eye had no tears. He said I was a great warrior, a coyote <gasps> man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart, and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They 
couldn't stop him, though. And Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. see any way out of this trap but suddenly one just appeared kind of like a mirror Felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever. Finally, I found myself back outside, first on the edge of a precipice overlooking a thundering white water river. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith, but no way in hell I was turning back. Him explain the meaning of all that mumbo jumbo. Mumbo jumbo is right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. Dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. <laughs> dozens? Well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of... At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady.
steep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. And wouldn't you know it, that crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches around here. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? What happened? Did you freeze? Oh. Okay. What? I think the game froze. No way. Come on. Come on, game. We are. Damn it. Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches around. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not going to drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of In the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that some of bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him, and never did collect my goddamn bounty. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand.
Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. was Bob Dalton's girl was always writing him about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Coffeville just to shut her up. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Hey, you got us an era. What's the ball, Jim? Others pay dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. <laughs> First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen have been tracking the Daltons for months. Now they finally had him dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just got to wait for some of This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. From above. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. <clears throat> Other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Like Jim Bowie, and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. Is that Silas Greaves? Shut up, old bitch! Oh, brother, I'm gonna. Ah!
and victorious, taking down those thieving Daltons. Silas Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. The Daltons blew up the safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. Finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in Coffeeville. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose them. Problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout in time. Did the Daltons kill them in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. hole up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They That's were cousins of the Daltons. They were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. Which here. wasn't any surprise, because well, those are. two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Hoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in coffee for that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. <gasps>
Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. It was him, the youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Reeves. This is where it ends for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. It's home. Oh, come on. But Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. It took me a couple of days to track the Daltons down. They can't get away with this! And in that time, a whole posse of local vigilantes offered to lend a hand. We'll track them to the ends of the earth. They seemed as determined as me to find those outlaws. But as we headed into those swamps, it was like I had my own private army. There was no way those boys were getting away this time. It was early fall, right? Beautiful time of year. At least you had the weather on your side. Uh, by my recollection, it was damp and foggy as hell. It was tough to stay on a true course, so we kept an eye out for landmarks. It was autumn. The maple trees were in full color, red as blood.
The rains that year were torrential, so the whole area was flooded. The vigilantes had spread out wide, and pretty soon I couldn't see anybody. Bury them in the swamp! Plant them where they stand! Except for some some bitches ahead of me wanted to do me harm, so I had to face them alone. I wondered why my compatriots didn't come running when they heard the shots. So did you find the Daltons? Not yet. But I did have the questionable pleasure of meeting a few of their friends. The boys had established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause. Brother, I'm gonna make you pay for it. Come on. The boys had established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause. under serious attack. My reinforcements was nowhere to be seen.
But luckily, a barn materialized as if right before my eyes. I scrambled up top to get a better view. But just ended up falling inside. So, how did you get out? The barn doors was open. About right then, I saw some suspicious characters running through the bushes. Of course, I followed them. But that goddamn swamp was like a goddamn maze, and pretty soon I had no goddamn idea where I was. Steve? So I just started walking, and pretty soon I... Oh. Steve? Steve? Uh, huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Indians surrounded me from all sides. No. I just wanted to make sure Steve was paying attention. Now, where was I? You were following the Daltons through a swamp? That's right. See, Steve? Dwight's paying attention. No, I I'm listening. I, I, I was just uh, resting my eyes. So, where was I? The Daltons. Right. See, there's a reason so many outlaw gangs are made up of brothers. Being a brother is a very sacred thing. It's a bond like no other. Stop that, son of a bitch! So did you ever find the damn Daltons? Not yet. But I did find a few of their cousins. You Kansans breed like rabbits. More Smiths or Heimhoffers or who knows what. But hell, what's more important than family? I bet Ben knows what I'm talking about.
boys are out there somewhere, standing together against anyone who would threaten them. That's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Yes, it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheel? What, what? Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was in that a fusillade of bullets come raining down from our house. And those vigilantes who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. But among those men that were shooting at me, I thought I saw some familiar faces. You don't give up too easy. That's the kind of man I am, Ben. I set out to do something. I do it. Surrender just ain't in my nature. Plus, I'm stubborn as hell. about then. Much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. Huh? But it turned out that they had me. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! The Daltons had played That's me like a fiddle. All, Apparently, the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean liner. Well, yeah, but I was in Did a fight. Did you hear about that ship that's gonna launch next year? Largest one in the world? Um, well, We're talking about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed big. I don't think they even float. So anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic is unsafe. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how'd you get off it, Mr. Grease? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hazy. But somehow, I managed to finally disembark. I was coughing up smoke and pretty damn pissed. I was done playing games with those boys. What? But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth 
proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean. <sighs> well, yeah, but I was in a fight. Did you hear that ocean? Uh, the largest one in the world? Uh, You're well, talking I'm... about the Titanic. If you ask me, it's too blessed to... <laughs> so anyway, don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say oh. that the Titanic is unsafe. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, uh. how'd you get off it, Mr. Grease? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection oh. might be a bit hazy. But somehow I managed to finally disembark. It was time to settle this once and for all. <clears throat> to come at me one at a time. They were in this together. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. Which one should go for first? The one back? No, we don't kill them. I killed them both. Oh my god. At any rate. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. 
confident that this time the odds were on their side. next time. Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side.
Two brothers side by side determined to take me down. Confident that this time the odds were on their side. Sucking up there so much. Oh, come on! I almost had him. Jeez, I can't remember that. percent they got it wrong Jordan. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers. My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told. It was 1868, and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well, I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but being my older brothers were bigger and heavier. They were already dead. And right then, I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo, you know about. But Bob eluded me until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch.
I'd been on their trail for months, ever since they left their hideout in the Bighorn Mountains. Led by Butch Cassidy, they were a loose association of outlaws who robbed banks and trains from Colorado to Montana. Among them was the Sundance Kid, and that murderous hombre I was tracking, Roscoe Bob Bryant. Were you a part of that giant Pinkerton posse after the Wild Bunch? No, boy. A circus like that would have slowed me down. Besides, I wanted Bryant all to myself. I'd heard about a large shipment of gold being transported to Wilcox, Wyoming on the Overland Flyer. I figured the Wild Bunch would likely hit such a treasure, and by God, I figured right. Okay, guys, I'm out of here for tonight.